Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Time for us to check out the front pages of our national dailies. We do have Mike Adebayo who joins the conversation in no time. I will start off with the Nation newspaper and let's find out what's making it. Uh, looking at the front page of the Nation newspaper, the bold caption says, United Nation, United States, Senior Advocate of Nigeria to Government, Act on Lagos Hashtag NSAS Report. That's uh, what you find. Another caption says, Why Asu can't go on strike by Chris Ngige. And Nasu rejects sharing formula. Another header says, I IMF, that's the International Monetary Fund, ENARA will cut cost of diaspora remittances. And you also find another caption here, Ekiti APC governorship aspirant to pay 225 million naira for farms. I mean, part of the conversation we had this morning on our top trending. Governors insist on litigation to end Paris Club refund now. And five die, 12 injured in Lagos gas explosion. Uh, not a sad incident that happened. Uh, that's the much we can take on the nation newspaper this morning. Okay, and now on the Daily Independent, it says there, on broadband, bridging access gap in rural areas will linger, says Telcos. Gas explosion kills five in Lagos. Wiki to IGP, tell Nigerians motive behind invasion of Odile's residence. And the U.S. says, or, or the U.S. says it awaits Lagos' response to end SARS report. We can also find here Buhari talks tough after bandits kill 15 people in Sokoto. Ex-PDP chair Mwazu fled Nigeria day before 2015 presidential election, says uh, George. National Assembly intervenes in Nigeria UAE diplomatic role. We can also find here headsmen Leo Butchers with cattle kill two and kidnap one in Ondo. Um, I think those are the stories that we can share on the Daily Independent. Away from the Daily Independent, let's check out the leadership newspaper. And uh, the bold caption reads, 13 days to December first deadline, MDAs for drag over compulsory COVID-19 vaccination for workers. That's uh, the bold caption for the leadership this morning. And you find vaccination is compulsory. Workers insist, I take that again, vaccination is voluntary. Workers insist, awaits memo. Federal government launches massive vaccination campaign Friday, says there are enough vaccines and manpower. Uh, still looking at the front page of the leadership, you have non-implementation of NARA invoice for pot charges, worsen fuel scarcity. Uh, that's also another header this morning. Only genuine negotiation can save Nigeria. Fire is quoted to say all of that. And he says, um, there's a writer saying, we're poised to end killings, says Southeast governors. Federal government unveils sector to achieve new development plan. And Kaduna to fund 2022 budget from IGR and five killed in Lagos gas explosion. Uh, intimidation won't get you presidency. Find out who's saying all of that on the leadership newspaper. And now let's go to the punch newspapers. Lagos and SARS report. Federal government lists loopholes. UN and US others demand sanctions. Songwulu advocates speed on white paper. An amnesty calls for prosecution of uh, attackers. There are inaccuracies in the report. We are with white paper, says federal government official. All right. Also on the punch this morning, federal government plans $100 billion Nigeria Brazil initiative on economy and food security. We appealed case of Nigerian girl wrongly jailed in Cote d'Ivoire, says the federal government. Suspected headsmen kidnap and kill Ondo Butchers uh, tricked to buy cows. Five dead, 15 vehicles destroyed as phone call triggers Lagos gas explosion. And also um, 300 monarchs back in Tinubu for 2023 presidency, says a campaign coordinator. We can also find on the punch this morning, Inara may reduce deposits in commercial banks. Uh, IMF won CBN. And Bajabia Mila summons ministers. Asu as lecturers threaten fresh strike. Federal government blames theft and insecurity and, and uh, others as oil production plunges. Those are the stories that we have time for on the punch this morning. Uh, Mr. Mark Adebayo, good morning. Thanks for joining us once again.
Is that the boy? Can you hear us clearly? Well, well we uh, of course wait to connect properly with Mark Adibai, who's going to be our analyst uh, on, on the off the press this morning. We'll probably just you know talk through some of the stories. Um, of course, the federal government's reaction to the um, NSAS report, you know, and, and it's saying that the federal government lists loopholes. Um, UN, US, and others demand sanctions. Song Wulu advocates speed on white paper. Amnesty calls for prosecution of attackers. And, of course, federal government officials saying there's inaccuracies in the report. So we're going to be speaking this morning with uh, Renu, uh, who, is, who, of course, uh, will be joining us uh, to discuss some of all these things. And um, I'm not sure exactly what the response, you know, that I was expecting from the federal government, um, if they were going to be, um, you know, actually investigating properly or, you know, if you're looking out for who uh, murdered Nigerians on the 20th of October 2020 and in the build-up also to the 20th of October because the, the papers, the report says 96 bodies were on record, 48 victims of the um, uh, toll gate, um, and of course it says 11, you know, possibly more. Um, but I'm not sure what the federal government's response really should be, if it's, it should be looking out for inaccuracies in uh, the report or actually should be, you know, bothered that 96 Nigerians died. Mr. Adebayo, good morning once again. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for joining us. All right, let's get you to speak on the um, NSAS report. It's made the headlines this morning on The Punch. Um, it says, uh, federal government lists loopholes. UN and US and others demand sanctions. And, uh, of course, um, it says also there are inaccuracies in the report. We await white paper, says a federal government official. Uh, let's have your thoughts on that. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. Now, the issue is that you can see that the federal government is not, you know, Nigeria has not been lucky to have an empathetic leader since independence. No, 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 we have not been able to get a leader that empathizes with the people. Look, other than empathize with the people, they are looking for loopholes, they are looking for errors, they are looking for, they are making excuses. I mean, I, 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 uh, human lives have been lost. I do know, I, I'm sure it's even more than the 12 that they are declaring. A lot of people have been injured. A lot of people, their, their lives have been have been destroyed by that incident. You know, it has been proved, it has been established that soldiers and policemen went to Lekki to shoot at unarmed protesters and kill some of them, maim some of them. You know, some are even missing that they have not been able to trace. And now, what what what, what is our government saying? They are looking for loopholes. They are, because for Abinishio, they began addressing issues from the premise of lies, of falsehood. They come out to say that, oh, soldiers didn't go there. The Attorney General of the Federation came out to say that it was talks. It was Miss Kriens who put on army uniform to go to Lekki to go and kill people. The Information Minister, of course, that one is known for his uh, inconsistencies and, and uh, all sorts of things. So, he came out to say that if nothing happened at Lekki, he even said that no policeman, no soldier went to Lekki at all. Now, a committee set up by the state government has established that soldiers actually went to Lekki to kill people. And the man, the lieutenant colonel who led the onslaught, his name and pictures are out there. It was established. So the federal government, rather than begin to find a way to assuage the heart of the people, the feelings of the people, is now coming out to even damage their feelings the more. And it is quite unfortunate, it is tragic that. We don't have leaders who defend us. We only have leaders who defend themselves, who protect themselves, you know. So, a, a, a case has been established. What the federal, the, the federal government should do is to apologize to Nigerians and to ensure that all the soldiers and policemen that were involved in the killing, and the unprovoked killing of unarmed peaceful protesters must be brought to book. Anything other than that, it is, uh, it is not acceptable. Yeah, but, but, I want but, to Mr. Nebayo, Looking at the current Nigerian government and their attitude, because you've, you've clearly mentioned that they've, you know, started the whole, you know, um, the, you know conversation with being defensive and, and not being factual and sometimes even lying outrightly. Um, do you expect that there would be, you know, punishment for the people who are found culpable here? They will do everything to protect them. They will do everything to protect those who are culpable, those, the, the killers of our use in Lekki, the, the Buhari government will do everything to protect them. They will do everything to ensure that they are protected from investigation, from prosecution and sanction. They will do everything to do that. You know, we, each time, the, we, we have never, in the, in the history of this country, 
we have not had a government that speaks for the people. That we have not, we have not been lucky. Uh, but the, this is the worst one. If this government will protect anybody, will speak up for anybody, it will be that the federal government of Guari's presidency will come up and speak for the killer others. We will come up and speak for grazing roots. That's how. If they want to speak for the people, that's, those are the people they speak for. It is quite unfortunate. The thing is that uh, uh, the civil society, we have a lot of work to do now. We have to ensure that the government does not bury this report. We have to ensure that people are brought to book. We have to ensure that people are dismissed and sent to jail. And that people who have committed murder should, should take the, 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 the full sentence of those who have committed murder. This is aggravated, unprovoked murder of Nigerians who, who the only weapon they had that day was the Nigerian flag. And they were sitting down. How do you shoot somebody who is sitting down? You see, in the kingdom of the animals, in the kingdom of the beasts, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the bushes, what happens is that when a lion wants to attack another lion, and that lion goes down respectfully, the lion will not attack again. Those are animals, so they have protocol of engagement even in the, when they have a crisis. But here in Nigeria, soldiers who are supposed to be pushing Boko Haram and other terrorists went against unarmed youths, peacefully protesting, and shot them dead. And then somebody comes out to say it's a lie. CNN was lying. Nigeria media are liars. Uh, uh, Transparency Transparency International is lying. Um, uh, you know, that's, no, the, the government comes out to lie and call other people liars. Why? Uh, they are the liars. This thing cannot be buried. It will be a, a collective failure of the civil society if we allow this report to be buried. Everybody, for, including the governor, who invited the military to go to Lekki, he came out to deny that the forces that are beyond their powers have gone to Lekki to create crisis. Then the soldiers came and said, no, the governor invited them. Everybody involved in the cumulative processes that led to the uh, provoked murder of October 20 must be brought to justice. That is what can sway the feelings of the families who have lost loved ones in this issue. Now, do, do you know there are people that, that, are, that are still missing, that they, don't, they have not found their corpses, they have not found them, they don't know where they are? A lot of people, you know, you saw, I, I, I watched the video, I, I, I went to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the tribunal to go and, uh, on a few occasions to go and see what is happening there. You saw people coming up, uh, coming to the place with crushes and everything. And the government said, uh, the, the soldier said they, they, they saw people there uh, with uh, black bullets. And uh, why, at uh, other cross examination, the general admitted that the soldiers, some were given black bullets, while some others were given light bullets. And the government were firing at people. Okay. I mean, it was even it was unnecessary for soldiers and police to go to that place at all. It was unnecessary. It was absolutely totally unnecessary. After all, the guys were about to disperse. You know, by eight thirty nine, they would disperse from this place. So why send soldiers by seven o'clock to go and kill them? Why? Well, DJ Switch was run out of this country. They, they, they ran her out of this country. Somebody who, who should be given a CFR should be given a national award was sent out. Uh, like Mohammed began to attack the young lady, began to call her liar, began to call her a terrorist, began to call her a man of names. And the lady, seeing that this government is inhumane and could eliminate her, had to escape from Nigeria. Imagine. Is this a government for us? Are this supposed to be a democracy? A government of the people by the people? Mark the people. Uh, let, let's also continue in the same light of, uh, you know, the issue. Because if you look at the nation newspaper, uh, the United Nations... The U United States uh, is, seem to be concerned, seem to be interested, uh, you know, with the fact that the federal government should implement the report of this panel submitted. My question now is, do you think that, you know, uh, the international community can enforce compliance, uh, can force the hand of the Nigerian government? Because we can actually predict what will happen. I mean, what's on the street are already saying that, you know, yes, as, as much as we commend the effort of the panel, uh, to what extent, to what um, would he yield any results? That's also another one. So uh, I'd like you to share your thoughts on that. I, I also would also, I don't know if you have seen that report, uh, the video where the chief of defense staff was saying that the means, the channel which the report was actually put out is not a proper channel. It shouldn't have been put out through that channel. Let's share your thoughts on this. Well, the issue is this, you know, I have never trusted or depended on the international community to fix your local problems for you. They can apply pressures. What they need to do for us, now the UN and the US, what they need to do for us and other international you know, actors, what they can do for us now is to match world with action. You know, 
it will work much like for instance why not anybody mentioned in that report bad them from coming to your country whatever they have your country in terms of money or property you know uh let that be such on them they should not have access to anything any property they have outside this country and any any account they have outside this country you know let apply individual sanctions against the, those people and apply sanctions against the nigerian police and the nigerian military so that that, that will that will, and of course any of our leaders they should ban them from coming to their to their countries to come and to come and seek medical care that will hit them that will make them do what is right if you don't do that they are not going to do what is right Nobody, no leader, no president, no governor, no minister, no commissioner, no local government chairman, no councillor should leave Nigeria to go and, and, and seek medical help abroad until they finish this NSAS matter. And of course, they need to end the SARS. It, it has not ended. Nigeria police is still extremely oppressive, repressive, and unjust. They are still killing people. After the NSAS uh, protest, minimum, like, the minimum of about 100 Nigerians are falling victim of police brutality. And in terms of a fatalities, but in terms of illegal detention, extortions, I mean, they are in their millions. Every day, go to Nigerian roads, you see that one is a common place. They didn't learn anything. Oh, I missed the anything from it. Just as a yeah. point of correction, that statement was accredited to the chief of uh, defense staff, Lucky Rabo. Right. The, the chief of defense staff, what did you expect to do? All this right. is what they do. They will defend their the rights no matter, uh, no matter how atrocious uh, atrocity that they, they, they must have committed. They will defend their boys. But right. you must remember that it is also in Nigeria and he has children that they could fall victim of these things. The right. police Ms. have Ms. killed in this country before. So what are we talking about? Yeah, let's yeah. quickly, because of time, let, let's also jump into other uh, stories this morning on the Daily Independent. Uh, two, of course, uh, stories on security. There it says, Buhari talks tough. After bandits oh. kill 15 people in Sokoto, it also <laughs> says headsmen lure butchers with cattle, kill two and kidnap one in Ondo. Buhari talks tough. He has been talking tough. He has not been acting tough. So that one is not new. You know, every time you say, hey, when we come after you, we will destroy you. We will... That is, <laughs> that, that's not a, I, I, I don't consider that, uh, that's not a presidential a, a attitude. A, a president will go after the killers. And destroy them. Not that I will do this. He has said that a, a million times, and nothing has happened. It's the thing is aggravating. They are killing generals. They are killing soldiers every day. Israel and bad and, and the so-called bandits. All of them are terrorists. But the federal government has refused to to, to 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 declare them as terrorists. It is unarmed people. People are asking for the new the new self determination that they are calling terrorists. So that the president is saying is threatening. He has been threatening action without taking action. That's it. So it, 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 it's nothing. Hey, but the, the terrorists are making jest of the president. You know, you can you can't do anything. You can only talk. You cannot act. They are not acting. They are not. They are not doing. I, I only I commend our forces in the fields, in the battlefields, what they are doing. But unfortunately, I do not believe that they have the kind of collaborative support that they are supposed to have from the federal government and the military high command. That is where the problem is. What happened to our intelligence community? You know, before these people act, before they lay ambush, what, what is the DSS doing? What is the DIA, the Directorate of Military Intelligence, doing? What is the National NIA, National Intelligence Agency, doing? What, what is their responsibility? Intelligence, what you are seeing in the aggravation of the terrorist attacks in this country is the failure of intelligence. Our intelligence agencies have failed us. They don't monitor the movement of the terrorists. They don't, they don't, they don't look at their tactical movement and their tactical pedigrees to be able to preempt when they are going to strike. And of course, the Nigerian military is, most of the times, is on the defensive instead of being on the offensive. You don't wait until you swap or Boko Haram strike before you begin to pursue them. Go and pursue them, eliminate them. The Nigerian military has the capacity, the professionalism to, to be able to handle Boko Haram. I, I bet you, if you leave the Nigerian military, within one month, Boko Haram will become issue. If you remove politics, remove a business, from this, I, from this whole issue of terrorism, remove politics, remove business, remove corruption. The Nigerian army, these are our soldiers. I am proud of them. They will destroy Boko Haram and kill others and terrorists all over Nigeria within one month. Give them one month without politics, without business. That's it. Okay, uh, let's move to the leadership newspaper where MDAs are foot dragging over compulsory COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, the question here is, should vaccination or vaccines be compulsory? Should it not be a voluntary issue? It should be, it should be uh, voluntary. It should be consensual. 
nobody should, especially if you are not traveling out of the country, nobody should force anybody to do to, to take a vaccine. I, I, I do not. I, I do. It is. It is. It will be unconstitutional. It will be legal. It is. It will be ultra violence for any to anybody to go to 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 to, to make it compulsory for anybody to take the to take the job. If you don't want to take the job for for reasons of whatever, you know, people should leave you alone. Of course. Um, the government all over the world in this issue of COVID-19, government will say if you are if you are if you are not using if you are not using your um, nose, nose mask, if you are not taking the job, you can't do this, you, you, you deny you some privileges and the rest of that. But I do not believe if you are able to prove that you don't have COVID COVID-19, then I, I I don't think anybody should be forced to take the job. If you are not traveling out of the country, I, I do not believe anybody should. Uh, we advise Nigerians to take the job, but I do not believe the government should make it compulsory. You can't force people to take the job. But it, it is beneficial, I believe, considering all the medical literature we have read, I, I believe it is, it, is, it is necessary, not compulsory. Well, we also need to um, improve on the number of vaccines we actually have available before you start forcing people to take them. Uh, especially, um, that is what is happening in those state. I don't yeah. know what is wrong with the governor. You know, you are making the compulsion. Why we arise less than two percent of your people have been vaccinated because that that's all that is available for them. Why? Why do you say you got, you want to sack people? People cannot come to the offices. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's unreasonable. All right, still on the still on the Daily Independent. Let's go back talking Nigeria's uh, challenges. Uh, it says uh, there, Wiki to IGP, uh, tell Nigerians the motive behind invasion of uh, Justice Odili's residence. Uh, share your thoughts uh, on that, Mark Adibayo. Nigeria must get to the bottom of, the, of what happened to Justice Mary Odili on the 9th of Friday, 29 October 2021. We must get to the bottom. We must know who, who did what. All these deniers, and uh, it's a season of deniers. I, I didn't know this person. They would have, were not involved. Were, uh, now, 14 suspects have been arrested. The seven that are on the road, all of them are security uh, agents, either from the military or from the immigration service or the police. How come it is only the civilians among the culprits that were apprehended? What happened to the soldiers? What happened to the policemen? What happened to the immigration officer? They must bring all the uniformed personnel that participated in that invasion. They must bring everybody back. Everybody must brought back. They must be made to face and of course, you know, uh, we are disagreeing with Governor Bike is, the, is the, him calling on the IGP. We are not going to get any transparent uh, investigation from that angle. We want an independent investigative panel to establish what really happened that night. And why yeah. the attempted assassination on Justice Mary Odeni? Well, so I don't know if we can call it an attempted assassination, but I, I also want you to, you know, respond to some of the, you know, the angles to it. You know, the fact that, you know, they are saying it's a fake policeman or they are fake staffs of, you know, the security agencies and, you know, they're, um, and uh, of course, uh, the person who also said that he works for the at Attorney General of the Federation, Abu Bakr Malami, and some of all, all of that. Malami, of course, has denied and said he doesn't know that person um, and, and uh, some, some of, you know, all these little details here and there. Um, does that also show, you know, the level of inconsistency with the story? Does that also show that we may not be making any headway? There are a lot of inconsistencies in the story. The, but the, the, the police admitted that the uh, Lawrence uh, Ajodu yes. is a, a, a fake CSP. Yeah, agreed. But they also admitted that there were uh, security agents you know, identifiable, authentic, bona fide security agents from the police, from the army, and the immigration service. It, they admitted that those, but all those ones, the seven of them, <laughs> they, they said they escaped, that uh, they, they have, uh, they are, they, that they are on the run. They could not, but the civilian, they were able to arrest the prayer warrior, the so-called Islamic prayer warrior. They are able to uh, uh, apprehend the fake journalist. Uh, they are able to apprehend the fake uh, the banker. They are able to ap apprehend the fake CSP. All of them are civilians. The ones that are not that are not in custody are all of them are uniformed personnel of the Nigeria Army, Nigeria Education, and Nigeria Police. So you must know that, that Nigerians suspect there is an active attempt at cover up. And until you bring those those ones who carry arms, they are the ones who, all the ones that carry arms that wanted to force their way into the fact that this was an assassination attempt is my personal opinion. You understand? That's how me I read it. So it is not as if uh, anybody said about. But I, that is my opinion. Uh, and it will have, I, 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 I like what Frank Ibar said. Even if that happened, it will have thrown this 
country into a terribly, you know, uh, cataclysmic crisis that nobody will, will be able to fathom the end of it. So we must, uh, we must get to the end of it. We are all these ones. We are is just, uh, just small screen that we are hearing. We are yet to get to the real bottom of what really transpired. Who ordered that invasion? Who approved the uh, uh, ammunition, the weapons? Because you can't just go to the armory and take weapons without somebody approving it. Somebody, you must sign for it and take it. Who approved it? Who dispatched? The, the, there seems to be an interagency collaboration in the invasion of that uh, 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 of that woman's uh, residence. It's an interagency collaboration, immigration, army, police. So, and somebody says uh, the government does not know anything about it. How, how is that even possible? That guy said he has recovered 29 accounts through the office of the Attorney General of the Federation. Of course, the AGF has denied him. He said he has never seen the man before. He has never met, met, met the man before. He has gone. He, said, he claimed that he has gone on several ass assignments for Malami. But this one, Malami did not send him. The police must tell us whether in the phone of that man, whether they, they, they did not find the, 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 the telephone number of the AGF. Or he did that no communication, there was never any communication between them, either through calls or through text messages or through shots. They, they should be able to tell us that. No. I, I, I think there's a, a desperate effort to cover up what really transpired. And I support Governor Wiki for calling on the government to really tell us, tell, tell Nigerians what really happened. And we should try to, to not to allow this. That we shouldn't turn Nigeria into a banana republic. We should not, because this is what this government is turning into. We should not allow that. You, do, you should know that the pedigree of this government does not accelerate it from this issue. When Buhari came into power, the first thing they did was to attack the judiciary. Judges were being attacked in their beds, were being taken away from their beds in the middle of the night. Not trying to attack and invasions. It is really start yesterday now. So how could the government now say they didn't know about this one? When you are the one who have gone after judges when you came into power, ostensibly under the guys that uh, you suspected, you suspected that they were corrupt. And none of them, none of the judges that were embarrassed, that were detained, none of them went on to prosecution because they didn't have, they couldn't establish any case against them. And this is a democracy. And I think the president must realize that he's no longer a soldier and that this is a democracy. Of, he said, he promised us that he was a born again Democrat. Now we see that he, it's not even a, a Democrat at all. We talk of being born again. All right. You know, about look it. at the, what he did in 1984. Is what against Umaru Diko. Is what he did against Namdekano. So, uh, so he, 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 this thing keeps uh, repeating itself. Illegal detentions and imprisonment of people. It is what is happening now. And then you are infending people's houses. All right, it's Mr. Adebayo. Court um, judge justice. Yeah, we would, of course, uh, we're out of time for of the press, but thank you very much. I always enjoy speaking with you. Thank you for your time and for speaking with us uh, this uh, morning. Thank you so much, uh, Plosif Africa. You are number one in terms of human and stories, and you are concerned about our plight in this country. I think uh, you deserve a national award, even thank though you. you are young, but you, are, you, have taken, you, have, you have taken the crown. So, I kudos. I completely you. agree. Thank you very much, Mr. Adebayo. All right, and that's uh, for Off the Press. Uh, we'll, of course, uh, we're moving straight to Today in History. Enjoy. <laughs>